Okay, so welcome back to the channel and in today's video I'm talking about Demna Vesalia's debut collection at Balenciaga. But before I continue, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fashion Roadman for all your fashion news. And of course, a lot of work goes into my videos, so if you want to support the channel, you can do so by buying my tote bags and the link to that will be in the description below. But anyway, let's get straight into the video. So now I realize that the audience for my channel is mixed with people who have a lot of fashion knowledge and really just watch my channel to get a second opinion on things or just to hear different opinions. And then there are also people that genuinely don't really know too much about fashion and they're learning as they go. So for some background knowledge, the person who I'm talking about today called Demna Vesalia, he's the current creative director of Balenciaga. Now he studied fashion design at the Royal Academy of Antwerp, um, Royal Academy of Arts in Antwerp. Um, he has been a designer, head designer at Margiela, uh, Louis Vuitton. Um, he started a brand called Vetmore in 2014. That was quite big and yeah, it just made a lot of waves. Vetmore, the collections were heavily inspired by things like his Georgian and Eastern European heritage. Um, there's a lot of capitalism references in there. And there were also references to things like religion. Now in 2015, Balenciaga came knocking off the back of the success of Vetmore, which is insane because Vetmore was literally just made in 2014. Um, to give you kind of an idea of how big Vetmore became. Um, and then essentially he became the creative director of Balenciaga and he was kind of running his own brand, Vetmore, and running and being the creative director of Balenciaga at the same time until last year when he decided that he would leave Vetmore to his brother and other people that helped create it and just focus solely on Balenciaga. So really in this video, we're just revisiting his uh, debut collection at Balenciaga and looking at um, all the references and what was in the collection. In general, if you want to learn more about Vetmore the brand, I actually reviewed the Spring Summer 20 Vetmore collection. So you guys should definitely check that video out if you want to learn more about Vetmore and what that brand is specifically about. Now around the time this collection happened for Demna Vesalia, there was a lot of kickback to Demna even being assigned as the creative director of Balenciaga for many different reasons. So to take you through the kind of like the journey of Balenciaga. So I'm going to start from like Nicolas Gasquier times. Um, he was seen as more of a like young designer who came to Balenciaga, but his aesthetic was more refined. So when Alexander Wang became the creative director after him, people saw Alexander Wang as like, oh no, here there's this streetwear designer, Balenciaga selling out. And a lot of people didn't like Alexander Wang's time at Balenciaga. I've also made a video about Alexander Wang at Balenciaga, so definitely check that out. So when Demna came in, it was more of the same sentiment of like, ah, oh, not another streetwear designer. We thought we were finally going to get, quote unquote, like a, true designer um which is just a bit weird because i think so many people misunderstand vetmore and how intelligent vetmore is even aside from the references just if you look at the tailoring and the construction of the garments itself and people just forget that literally demna worked at margella he learned his tailoring working at maison margella and of course he learned a lot of things working at uh, louis vuitton so it's just insane that people kind of saw him as a streetwear designer because if you look at Vetmore on the surface, it looks like very wearable, everyday clothing, but there's obviously more to it than that. So to start, I'm going to read out the earlier part of the press release that they released, the Lentiago release for this collection. The only reason why I'm reading the earlier part is because this part is more relevant to what I'm talking about in the collection. And I will refer back to this press release as I'm talking in the video, essentially. So the press release goes as follows. Cristobal Valenciaga's methodology was to create clothing engineered to transform how women felt and therefore how they looked. The three-quarter sleeve, the standaway collar, the skirt running slightly ahead of one's walk, the rapport between body and clothes, a couture attitude. Valenciaga was built on the relationship between couturier, client and cloth. The Balenciaga Autumn Winter 2016 Ready to Wear Collection, the debut by the new artistic director, 
is presented as a series of couture attitudes transforming a modern utilitarian wardrobe. The notion of sophisticated is toyed with an abstract inspiration. What is sophisticated today? How to place Balenciaga's legacy in a new context? The collection is built around four attitudes focusing on a manner of carrying oneself in clothing rather than silhouette. The mannerisms are then translated into cut and construction to discreetly and distinctly affect the deportment and psychology of the wearer. Now, of course, that's a lot of words, sounds like a lot of things. Um, I will refer back to this press release as I go on and it will start to all make sense. Um, it's just really important that I read that out first. So after you watch the video, maybe if you ever come back to it, it will make so much sense in that statement, basically. So to break down what was in the press release really is just saying that Demna Vesalia's goal for this collection was taking Cristobal Balenciaga's aesthetic and taking his design language and translating it and transforming it um, for the contemporary market, so the modern market. So for this collection, Demna did a lot of research in terms of trying to figure out what the house codes are of Balenciaga, trying to look into the work of Cristobal Balenciaga. And then to quote what he said here, he described what he was doing as toying with the notion of sophistication, a couture attitude into the modern utilitarian wardrobe, which is also um, what was written in the press release. And I think he achieved this in so many ways. I think the first and most obvious thing is the first few looks in the collection, we saw these amazing pieces and there was a huge focus on the tailoring. And if we look at the coats, they altered the shape and the perception of the human form, which is definitely a very Balenciaga thing to do. And I think this was achieved through the structured shoulders, the boxy silhouette and the cinch waist on the blazers, coats, jackets and dresses that we did see from a few of these looks. I think even more importantly, what stood out to me more than anything else was really how the clothing moved which is even something that's a bit more difficult to achieve um, when you're walking the clothes moving really beautifully. Um, I think that was an underrated part of the tailoring in this collection. And Demna Vesali actually made a statement about this. So he said, I drew on the Balenciaga elements in the architecture of the collection. I drew on my own aesthetic and design instincts in the choices of garment, the approach and the attitude of the clothes. And as I go through this collection, that statement will make complete sense because obviously, like he said, he wanted to translate Balenciaga's house codes into a contemporary market. So he's just saying, I looked at what Balenciaga does and I was like, okay, how could I add my own taste and my own flair to it uh, to make it mine, but also to make it Balenciaga at the same time. And I think in general, this was something that was very, very easy to see looking through the collection. Um, in a lot of old Balenciaga work, a lot of the models were seen wearing these really fancy leather gloves and it made all the looks look really elegant. So what Demna Vesalia did is he had gloves in the collection, but not elegant, slim, sleek leather gloves. No, Demna Vesalia had these like motocross gloves, which is just insane and such a Demna Vesalia thing to do. And something I think Balenciaga would be happy about because there's one thing I know about Balenciaga. Balenciaga was all about, you know, changing what the status quo is, more about creating unique things looking at unique ways to work, looking at unique ways of tailoring. And it's so funny because a lot of people that I would consider like fashion elitist, they just see anything that isn't aesthetically the same as Balenciaga as, oh, that's terrible. It's not Balenciaga. Balenciaga would hate what Balenciaga has become. Not really, because if you think of the philosophy of what Demna Vesali was trying to do in this collection, what Cristobal Balenciaga did, basically a very similar thing. And I like the contrast between the looks that were kind of more elegant and then this sort of street edgy type of aesthetic with the motocross gloves. I thought that was quite interesting. We also saw Demna Vesalia bring back a lot of the skirts that are very well known to be part of Cristobal Balenciaga's design language. So first we can talk about pencil skirts. Um, in a lot of old Balenciaga work, what we see is anytime Balenciaga used to design you know, those jackets with the cinch waist, he used to like to have them with the pencil skirts and um, stilettos, and that's how he used to style those things. And what we saw Demna Vesalia do was bring back pencil skirts. And in this, in the press release of this collection, Demna Vesalia talks about trying to make the wardrobe more contemporary, but at the same time utilitarian. So when he brought back these pencil skirts, he, there was a focus on 
how wearable it is. And that's why if you look at the front of the skirt, there's kind of like this pleated design and he's stitched things, well not him, um, but he got his team to stitch things in a certain way in which when you walk, the skirt moves with your legs, which creates a comfortable wearing experience as opposed to a normal type of pencil skirt in this fabric that would be very, very restrictive and very difficult to walk in. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And it's, it's similar to when you see models wearing these skirts and walking, they almost look like they're shorts, depending on what angle you're looking at. And I thought that was really, really interesting tailoring. And I just like all the aspects of tailoring in this collection. Some other skirts we saw in this collection were these wide flowy pleated skirts, which is also another trope to old Balenciaga work. Cristobal Balenciaga used to design a lot of things in pleats from skirts, you know, with flowy wide pleated skirts um, to there's a very famous dress that Cristobal Balenciaga designed and it's like a head, it's like a top to bottom pleated dress. And the silhouette of these skirts looks exactly like that. So I, I really enjoyed that, that he brought those back, those sort of like long past the knee, wide flowy pleated skirts. That's just a straight ode to Cristobal's work. And to quote what Demna said, he said, my first priority was to understand the methodology of Cristobal, his work around the body, and how to do it today in 2016. And I think that's why people get it wrong because I think when people think of Demna's work, they look at it and they see puffer jackets and they see jeans and they're just like streetwear, boring. Instead of thinking of all the minute tailoring details that all come together to create something that's absolutely aesthetically adept. And that's why if you go back to the show notes, there's, there's a phrase there that says like, it's a translation, not a reiteration. So it's more like a new chapter, more like a transformation of Cristobal's work rather than just taking it and copy and pasting it essentially. Now for me personally, my favorite pieces in these collection were the puffer jackets and the kind of sort of these like track jackets because they had the silhouette of a Balenciaga cocoon dress, which I, it was just blowing my mind. It was, it was insane. They, the way they fit, they were away from the body. They weren't close to the body, just like a cocoon dress. Um, they also had this sort of V shape, just like a cocoon dress. And then the way they were designed, when you wear it, the, the jacket's kind of shrugged off to the back and at the hip area, it kind of leans forwards, which has this very unique aesthetic. And then when you zip up those puffer jackets, and I had friends who used to own those jackets, that they would kind of, it would sit in front of your body. I just thought it was so, I just love the silhouette of those jackets. I think, yeah, the silhouettes are just really nice. And also the shape of those jackets is why it was so easy for the stylist Lotta Volkova to style it in a way where they were styled as off shoulder um, because of how the garment sits on the body. It's quite easy to do that. And they're also kind of telling you through the styling that you can wear it this way and it will kind of stay in place, um, which was quite interesting. And Demna is literally telling people this. In an interview, he literally talks about how these aren't styling tricks. He said, that's all part of the construction, the way they're shaped and they were all really considered and it's easy to see, I think when you start to look at all the pieces in the collection. However, I would be doing him sort of a disservice if I talk about all the ways he transformed old Balenciaga house codes, which he definitely did. Um, but there was definitely more to this collection than just that, even though the tailoring was amazing. Something that we've become accustomed to with Demna Vesalia's work, if it's at Vetmore or Balenciaga, is him always referencing Eastern European fashion and style and culture and religion, always. And this is something we've seen over the years, past, present. And this collection was no different. And in this collection, we saw these looks that sort of had this mismatch of prints and different, sort of, they looked like archive fabrics. And what this was a reference to was how older people and just people on the street in Georgia and Eastern Europe dress in general, especially the type of ones that go thrifting. And in interviews, Demna has always talked about, this is mainly for interviews with Vetmore, but he's also talked about this with Balenciaga to a degree that he's more inspired by the way people dress on the street. And that normally how he finds inspiration for collections is he will leave like his nice neighborhood and just go to like a more 
edgy street neighborhood and just look at how people are dressed and kind of be inspired by what they're wearing. And this type of design with the whole archive colorful mismatch of fabrics is something we've seen in past Vetmore shows and shows that came after this Autumn Winter 16 show for Vetmore and Balenciaga. And on the screen, I'm gonna put examples of Vetmore shows where we've seen sort of similar um, clothing and sort of the same reference. And it doesn't surprise me that Demna references in this way and looks at sort of all this vintage type of fashion in Eastern Europe because he worked for Margiela and that's a very Margiela thing to do. I think Margiela is literally known for being someone that, you know, used to take archive fabrics and used to thrift things and turn them into these just insane creations. Um, so that's clearly an ode to his time at Margiela. And like I said, I've read interviews in the past where he says that he owes a lot of his fashion learning and his fashion design skills to him working at Margiela. And this is also why it makes sense in terms of when you look at the Balenciaga models, because most of the time for Vetmore and for Balenciaga, um, Demna used to street cast models. So just find people on the street that he thought looked interesting and ask them to model for his shows. And this collection was no different. And this type of theme continues throughout the collection. If we look at the sunglasses, which had these massive chains, and this was actually a reference to old grandmas. You know when grandmas wear those, those glasses with the ropes? Um, that's what it was a reference to. It was sort of taking that reference and making it more suitable for a younger audience. I thought that was quite an intelligent reference. I really loved that. And then in different looks, we just saw um, models wearing just plain reading glasses, just in general. So we have a more funky sunglass kind of look with the chains that's supposed to resemble a grandma's um, pair of glasses with the ropes. And then of course, we just have the plain uh, reading glasses. We also saw some other interesting accessories, whether we're talking about the safety pin earrings, which goes back to the whole normcore thing and just him referencing how people are dressing every day and day to day. And then other different interesting earring designs. And there were a few necklaces that were quite nice in this collection. Now to quote something interesting that Demna said, he said, Cristobal was about the tailoring. I wanted a new way of finding the elegance for today in a 360 degree way. And this is exactly why I said, in terms of the way he thinks and the philosophy, it's very similar to Cristobal Balenciaga because it's, it's thinking about how can I transform the way fashion is viewed? How can I change people's perception of what they think should be worn or what is clothing or what is a suitable shape to wear? Or can I transform these shapes in everyday clothing? And that's what Balenciaga and Demna did through this collection because when you look at it from face value, you just see jeans, skirt, okay, blazers, jacket but then you look at all the tailoring and the references and you're like this is so interesting because i feel like he's hit two things at once with this collection so it's wearable which is good for a business and then it's not basic so you have the fashion crowd who anytime something is wearable they hate it because they're like that's easy that's not art we want art give us art but then he's kind of appealed to that crowd though because the silhouettes and the shapes are so interesting that even though they're kind of wearable and it is at the end of the day still everyday clothing, it's every, to me, it's like everyday clothing in couture shapes. So it's like elevated clothing almost. And there were two main types of footwear we saw throughout this collection. We either saw stilettos or these really chunky platform heels. Um, not really too much to say about them other than they just came in many ish, interesting like heights. There were more shorter ones than there were ones that are higher up the leg. Same thing with the boots, the chunky heels. Um, there were some that were shorter and then some that were longer in length. Um, but in general, they came in many different colors. There were some interesting ones, like there was one that looked like it had crystals on it. There were some that came with the maximalist colors and prints from some of the later looks in the collection. Um, but in general, the footwear didn't really interest me that much compared to like the clothing. Um, so yeah, not really too much to say about the footwear. But of course we can't talk about any luxury brands collection without talking about the bags because that is in some people's eyes the most important part of 
what these brands do because that is what makes the most money in terms of bags, footwear, other accessories and perfume. That is really what brings home the money for most of these luxury brands and everything else is just like marketing and branding to, to just make people feel like we're still luxury so therefore our perfume buy it. Um, and most designers that don't work at luxury houses it's because they're not able to to design like an it bag so then they don't do well financially because clothing doesn't really sell that much um, compared to bags and other accessories so in this collection we saw mainly three types of bags so the first bag we saw and we saw this in different shapes but in general there were these leather bags very boxy leather bags they're shaped like squares and Demna actually said, I'm going to read out a quote later, he said they're um, supposed to look like tall boxes, which is interesting because of course he did say that there's a very utilitarian focus to this collection. And I like that he's making stylish things that at the same time are practical. Fashion and fashion people in general are known to go against that. That Fashion people are the type of people that they would rather put themselves in discomfort just to meet an aesthetic end uh, just for aesthetic they'll put themselves literally they'll wear like clothing that's not even weather appropriate just because they're like well it looks nice um so i, I do like this sort of dichotomy between having something that's very utilitarian and also it being very stylish i like that the next bag we saw was this this bag that kind of looked like a reusable shopping bag um which is quite interesting it goes back to demna's normcore obsession and if you don't know what normcore is it's kind of like this obsession with like everyday clothing which is kind of what Demna has he literally goes to look at people on the street to see what people on the street are wearing and that's how he gets a lot of his inspiration um and what something Demna has done is kind of taken a lot of normcore things and taken a lot of everyday things that people wear and people use and bring it into a luxury context now, I don't know how I feel about that. People are normally on two sides with this. It's either people think it's smart because it's a commentary on just everyday wear, but then there's another side of people that are like, he's kind of just taking everyday wear and then reappropriating it to earn loads of money and for a financial end, which I can agree with both sides because they're like, why do you take, if you're, if you want to comment about like shopping bags or whatever, why would you bring it into a context where you're going to sell it for like 800 pounds? Um, and I can see both sides of the arguments. Personally, I don't really stand on any particular side. Um, I'm somewhere in the middle in terms of that. But moving on, the last bag we saw in the third type of bag, we saw these sort of really long clutches. I've not really seen a lot of clutches that were that, that long in like length. Um, so I thought that was kind of an interesting take, almost too utilitarian because normally clutches are supposed to be, and look, I'm not even sure, if, are they called a clutch or a purse, but they're supposed to be smaller, they're supposed to be cute. Um, but Mr. Utilitarian here, he was like, yeah, I'm just going to give you really long, big um, clutch bags. And Demna actually made a statement on these bags and what he said was, we just thought they should be useful. So one is based on a toolbox, one is a cycle bag, and the ones at the end are market bags. And I think this makes a lot of sense. And I think, I can't remember where this statement is from, like what publication interviewed him. But I remember the journalist in this um, article was talking about how this makes a lot of sense because Demna Vesalia is sort of like a Margiela sort of, kid like he learned his craft really working at Maison Margiela so my um, very Margiela thing to do is taking everyday things and thrifting it or repurposing it and taking things that are like market bags and bringing it into a luxury context is also a very Margiela thing to do this was a really really solid um, debut for me um, from Demna and I will talk about more of his work at Balenciaga because it really does fascinate me and why it fascinates me more is because I've started reading on Christabel's old work and I didn't realize how much or how similar a lot of Demna's work with Balenciaga is to Christabel's work until recently because I didn't really read into Christabel's work until like literally a few weeks ago. Um, so 
yeah, I definitely want to talk more about his work. I like how he just took everyday wear with like couture shapes. So you can wear things that are very wearable and get a lot of wear out of it. But at the same time, it's not, it's not basic. None of it is basic. And I mean, that's why Balenciaga hired him. Ultimately, Balenciaga, they care about money. They want to make money at the end of the day, but they also wanted someone who could balance making money, but also keeping the craft and the art of fashion alive, especially for a house like Balenciaga. Um, so yeah, all in all, I thought it was amazing. And I really wanted to talk about this collection and really talk about how, to what extent, Demna Vesalia does reference Cristobal's old work. Because I think now, when I see people talk about Demna's work, it's the conversation is, especially with older people, no offense to older like fashion journalists and stuff, I don't think they, they don't understand it. And most times they just talk about prints or the meme -y stuff he does with like stuff that he'll print on a t-shirt or like having a seven layer parka. And they don't talk about like the tailoring in it, how skilled his tailoring is, how refined the tailoring is, how similar the silhouettes are to Cristobal Balenciaga's old work. I like to see more people just talking more about that than just always talking about like capitalism and how he references capitalism and all that stuff, which is also relevant, but that's kind of the only direction I see people steer the conversation when they talk about uh, Demna Vesalia. But on that note, comment down your thoughts below. Like this video if you liked it. Share it with all your fashion friends. Like I said earlier in the video, if you want to support the channel, there are so many ways you can support the channel. I mean, the link to the tote bags in the description below. If you want access to extra content, I have a Patreon. Um, or if you just want to donate to the channel, you can do that as well. Links all in the description below. Um, but on that note, I shall be back with another video very soon. Hopefully soon I'll get some videos on Cristobal Balenciaga's work um, out. But I don't know, right now I'm just more reading loads of books about Balenciaga and not really more for myself, more than anything. But hopefully I can get some history of Balenciaga videos out there because I, I checked YouTube and there aren't too many. Um, but yeah, on that note, I'll be back with another video very soon.